Recently, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously allowed our association members to gather for an international seminar. It was a joyous occasion as Master and disciples reunited to meditate and pray for peace. During her visit to meet with our association members, Supreme Master Ching Hai also spoke of the teachings of past masters and answered the spiritual questions of fellow initiates. Throughout the ages, compassionate, enlightened masters have urged people to surrender to the greater universal power by seeking the divine within, from which all other goodness and happiness follow. This message was echoed again in Supreme Master Ching Hai's discussion with the theme Dhyana Paramita, the great practice of meditation, with our association members during the international gathering on January 9, 2009. You have a choice to listen to the Buddha talking about meditation or just a simple story. Anybody like Buddha and meditation, right? And anybody like to listen to a story, also a moral story, right? hand. It's the same, right? It's the same. So, I mean... <laughs> oh, Buddha story. <laughs> Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. <laughs> the Buddha wins. This is uh, one of the uh, session in the Diamond Sutra. The Buddha talks about uh, a couple of things. First is charity, and then the second is keeping the precepts. And then the third one is about patience, endurance. And the fourth is about uh, meditation. And the fifth is about wisdom. Everybody comfortable, yeah? How small but cozy, huh? You sit here, it's fine, right? It's also good to have a fireplace even. There's some fake wood over there, you see? <laughs> it may look like Canada, no? You feel at home now, no? <laughs> you do. Okay. Well, maybe one day we can make a fire, hey? I don't know how, actually. It looks like maybe by gas, and then they make it glowing, look like real fire. But I don't think it's a real fire. Maybe it's not a real chimney at all. It's just for show. I like chimney. I like fireplace and all that. But nowadays, no time, you know? <laughs> Did you see the news today? Fly news? There was a very beautiful news today. As a European Union Parliament, they endorse kind of meatless diet. Wow. Yeah, wow, yeah, I have to tell you. <laughs> they had a, a meeting, and uh, it's something like they have agree, you know, according to all the evidence that mm, less meat is to cut the methane, to cut the pollution and to halt climate change. So they're going to reconsider the subsidies for the meat industry. Before, they always give the subsidies to meat industry. You know that, don't you? Otherwise, the hamburger, instead of one dollar, it will cost like thirty dollars or something like that. Yes! All your tax money go into that hamburger or beef burger. That's why it's so cheap. Don't you ever wonder why it's so cheap? Subsidies. Yeah, subsidies from the government. And where does the government have money? <laughs> your pocket. <laughs> yeah, tax, yes. And then everybody thinks, oh, it's so cheap. You know, everybody go to hamburger and beef burger shop to eat, 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 eat. And all the money you pay all the while and you don't know. And you, nah, of course you know. No, you don't know? Not really. Not really? <laughs> okay, all right. You're eating your money. <laughs> it's not hamburger that you're eating, <laughs> it's your money. And then everybody thinks, wow, oh, so cheap, you know, all these uh, fast food chains, so cheap, so cheap. <laughs> and everybody likes it because it's cheap. 
But it's not cheap. First, it came from subsidies, yeah, which is your pocket money or your parents' pocket money or your grandparents' or oh, whatever, yeah, continue. And then later, after you eat all that, you get sick also, and then also your money again. Go hospital, eh? Either free in the hospital or not free is the same. Free, then it's from your tax. <laughs> not free, from your pocket. <laughs> Both of them came from your pocket. <laughs> wow, oh, you know everything now. <laughs> oh, so when I saw that news, wow, I jump around like a kid. <laughs> I laugh and cry at the same time. It's uh, not a very big step, but it's a step. I can't believe we, we live to see that day, you know. <laughs> I mean, European Parliament is a big, powerful institution, right? It's not just uh, you and I. I was so happy, I laugh and cry, and then uh, like a child, you know, jump around, I was so happy, and then my dogs were so worried, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they come around me, hang around me, jump around me also, and uh, kissing me all over. They were like uh, crying with me. They were crying because they saw me crying. I was so happy. So I had to tell them, no, no, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just happy. Everything okay. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> you know, because they were so worried. They all jump around and crying and you know whining. You know, and clicking me all over. Oh, I'm drool all over. You know. <laughs> but I said, no, no. I'm just happy. Don't worry. Don't worry. And then they all calm down. You know, and they never saw me like that. I guess. Yeah. Now and again, we have some good news, eh? It's worth to be happy about. Every day we have good news and some news to motivate you to work for the world. So you should watch it. Okay, let's talk about the Buddha's wisdom here. In the Diamond Sutra, one section of it, the Buddha talked about Dhyana Paramita, mean the great practice of meditation, the real meditation. Here, when you meditate, it's not real. You understand me? <laughs> I'm talking about the Buddha's meditation. Okay, then uh, Suputi. Suputi is one of Buddha's great disciples. Huh? So when he asks something, there is something meaningful to ask. So here, Suputi inquired the Lord Buddha, saying that, Suppose a good pious disciple, either man or woman, having begun the practice of attaining Anuttara Samyaksambuddhi, how is he or she to keep his mind tranquil? How is he to wholly subdue his wandering thoughts and craving desires? You all want to know this, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the Lord Buddha replied to Subhuti, the Buddha said, Suputi, any good pious disciple who undertakes the practice of concentrating his mind in an effort to realize Anuttara Samyaksambuddhi, should cherish only one thought, namely, when I attain this highest perfect wisdom, I will deliver all sentient beings into the eternal peace. That's the only thought that a pious disciple should bear in mind during meditation, to calm his mind. That's what the Buddha said. Try it tonight. Do you know what is Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi? That's okay, the highest perfection, the highest Buddha nature, okay? Anuttara, supreme. Samyak Sambuddhi is the highest Buddha nature, God Almighty, yeah? The highest uh, wisdom. Now, when we uh, meditate, when we undertake the concentration of the mind, we should bear in mind only one thought. That is, when I attain this highest perfect wisdom, I will deliver all sentient beings into the eternal peace of nirvana. 
eternal peace of nirvana paradise, the highest paradise. Okay, now, can we do that? Do you have this thought in your mind when you meditate? No? What do you have? Thinking like daily thoughts. Daily thoughts. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, pretty much the same. Pretty much. <laughs> huh? Same? Who has the same like her right hand? Yeah, yes, okay, okay. I understand. No, I don't mean like when your mind wander around, which it does. What I mean is your motive, your motivation of... Uh, practice meditation is to help sentient beings, no? To help everybody else, no? At least to help yourself, to help your nine generations, five generations, yeah? But better still, to help the whole human beings, the whole sentient beings and non-sentient beings even. Nowadays, you know, environment protection <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah? But in the Buddha's time, he also already mentioned that, that we have to protect the environment. Okay, so if we, a practitioner, can cherish this very high ideal, like, okay, I practice so that I can deliver all sentient beings, then it would be great then even though you have not known the whole Buddha nature, you already have a Buddha attitude. Hmm? Just like a prince, he was still young. His father is still on the throne. But he must know that one day he's going to succeed his father, sit on that throne and take care of the whole nation. He must know that already. He must have this motive in his mind. Hmm? Similarly, a practitioner must have this motive, this highest ideal in the mind that one day if I become Buddha, I will liberate all sentient beings. Deliver. Deliver means liberate them, yeah? Help them to attain eternal peace in nirvana. If this purpose and vow is sincere, then all sentient beings already delivered. Wow! And yet, Suputi, if the full truth is realized, one would know that not a single sentient being has ever been delivered. Of course, this is a Diamond Sutra huh? for all the Buddhists who don't really practice Zen or meditation. For them, this is the ultimate kind of Sutra, you know, the highest sermons <laughs> of the Buddha, and they revere the Sutra very much. You know, the book, yeah, the Bible. And some even put it on the altar with incense and uh, candles, you know, flowers and fruits, and that, <laughs> bow to the Sutra every day. And the Buddha say that if your purpose and vow you know, like to vow to deliver sentient beings, yeah. And your purpose and your vow is sincere. I mean, you're truly honest with your vow, truly want to deliver all sentient beings. Then all sentient beings already been delivered just by your sincere motive and intention. My God, yes. But then... He said, if the full truth is realized, then that person, the practitioner, would know that there's no sentient being has been delivered. The Buddha asked, and why is that? Subhuti, because if the Bodhisattva Mahasattvas have kept in mind any such arbitrary conception as one's own self, other selves, living beings or universal self, they could not be called bodhisattva mahasattvas. Yeah. And what does it mean, Subhuti? It means that there are no sentient beings to be delivered. 
and there is no selfhood that can begin the practice of seeking to attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Do you really understand what he's saying? Any of you understand? No, okay. Suppose the Australian who has came here to die. <laughs> but he said, no, he didn't come here to die. So <laughs> he came here to live then. Okay, now, <laughs> suppose this might here has attained Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, mean the highest perception of Buddhahood. Then maybe some trust him and, you know, get some initiation from him. And then they were sitting there and seeing him with his uh, manifestation, Buddha body and all that, and seeing the Australian mate, you know, taking him to the Buddha's land and visiting this and that and others. At the same time, do you think this Australian Buddha would think the same way that his disciple do? Yes or no? No. Okay, you got a little bit. But why no? Is he dead or deaf or <laughs> blind or something? Why didn't he know what his disciples know? Tell me, anybody know? Because he knows that the disciple can be enlightened by himself or themselves. And the disciple think is he like enlightened them. No, 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 no. It's not that. No, no. Okay. Uh, you understand something, but it's not that, of course. It's not that. It's not that. What it means is that when you have attained Buddhahood, you have no more ego like the way we have in the human life. You see what I mean? Like, okay, I do this, I do that. Yes? I enlighten him, I enlighten her. But when you have become Buddha, you don't have this I anymore. Yes? yes? So you don't have any registration uh, like uh, office. It's like in the uh, center here we have a registration office. Everybody come, <laughs> you know, and put their name on and say, okay, I have come today, I go tomorrow. So in the Buddha's mind, there's no sentient beings come and go through the wavelength of his existence. Even if they come and go, he is one with all of them. That's why he can suffer with them and they can be happy with them. But nevertheless, it doesn't have him and doesn't have them. It is a joy to have you with us today for Between Master and Disciples. Please join us again tomorrow for part two of Supreme Master Ching Hai's discussion, Dhyana Paramita, The Great Practice of Meditation. Healthy Living is up next on Supreme Master Television, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned. May Providence smile on you each and every day. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash bmd